Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to how one NASA image tells dozens of stories and the image is of the entire world in darkness with like their lights on. And I mean, yeah, based off that, we're going to see how it tells dozens of stories. But yeah, we're going to check this out. Hopefully going to enjoy. Links also in the, in the description to my Patreon where you can see reactions that I can't post to YouTube. And let's just see this image and I guess what about this image explains stuff i assume a lot more lighting in certain regions and a lot less in poorer regions and stuff maybe but yeah we're gonna see what this video has to say how much can a single picture tell us about ourselves this is a composite image of several satellite photos it can help us better understand the current developments and conflicts on the um, I mean, firstly, oh, well, let me just get back. Firstly, just looking at the lighting, India is lit up. Like, crazy. I mean, actually, when you think about the population, it's understandable. But you say that, but then you look at China. Obviously, China has big cities, but it's not the same as this region. Jesus. And then, obviously, Europe, crazy crazy here then in this area in the middle east it's just a massive load of lighting lighting i don't know what regions are here i mean saudi arabia is here israel palestine jordan syria is here i think or maybe that's yeah i think that's syria i don't actually know there's a lot of lighting here for some reason and then obviously you got the us i move that south america is very dim like very dim Obviously, Africa's very dim, but South America's a, like a lot more of a surprise, to be honest. And then, yeah, Russia. I mean, Russia is, is I mean, it's spread out as a massive country. You got Australia, which is lit up in areas I wouldn't imagine. I'm kind of confused with Australia. Okay, we're gonna check this out and see what's going on here, man. Because I am, I'm confused. The amount of light pollution. Let's get back. Istanbul. Oh damn. The amount of light pollution is most severe in heavily populated areas, Tokyo. as well as in regions of high prosperity. In Europe, the Benelux region and the densely populated Po Valley are so bright that the individual towns blend into one big sea of light. So I'm here, obviously London, you've got a lot of major cities here. You can see the highlands where there's not as much because obviously the highlands are very like sparsely populated. In terms of Europe, it might be one of the most sparsely populated areas. Obviously, you've got, you got Scandinavia, but it's not really showing a lot of, like, Sweden and um, Sweden and Finland and um, Norway. See, I'd say the Highlands, based off this image in Europe, looks like the most, like, the least populated area, which is kind of a surprise. Especially in the Arab world, the extraction of oil creates bright lights from oh, the flaring of gas. It's oil. And in Africa, you can trace the path of the Nile River, which, as the lifeline of Egypt, attracts civilization and is filled with commercial boats. Damn. In the mostly uninhabited regions of Western Australia, the satellites could even capture lights from wildfires that occurred over a span of 22 days. What the hell? And in Asia, the Indian subcontinent is clearly standing out. Yeah. Nearly 20% of the planet's population lives here. And the rapid population and economic growth can be seen by comparing the area from how it looked in 2012 and then again in 2016. Wow. However, it's just as interesting to look at the regions where there is no light. The Syrian civil war, which has wiped out hundreds of thousands of lives, has darkened the country. Due to the ongoing fights, the electrical grid is only partially available and the power supply is poor. Aleppo, the largest city in Syria, is considered an important cultural place. The old town has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1986. But the war has almost completely destroyed the historic city. Fuck, man. The darkening can also be observed in Raqqa, which has long acted as the de facto capital of the terrorist Islamic State. When we see a city darken in these images, 
It shows the annihilation of a place and its history, and ultimately, the end of many human lives. It's such a shame what they do to these countries, these historical cities in these countries. It's just... Like, this, these... I've seen, like, some sort of pictures of, like, certain cities before, and they look beautiful, and then it's just destroyed like this. Such a shame. These black pixels in such an image can say a lot more than the lit ones. This also applies to the Korean Peninsula. Damn. While South Korea is brightly lit, North Korea is almost completely black. The metropolitan area around the capital of the South, Seoul, now has more than 25 million inhabitants. The population density here is twice that of New York City and eight times larger than that of Rome. Also the waters surrounding Korea are brightly lit from the numerous fishing boats off the coast. According to the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, there are clear rules for how far off the coast a country may explore its resources. Additionally, there are several agreements between countries that regulate fishing. This creates odd shapes and perfectly straight lines, bringing to light the absurdity of dividing our planet into arbitrary legal zones. All these lights from South Korea and the waters that surround it stand in stark contrast to the north, where only the North Korean capital Pyongyang stands out a bit. Tiny bit. North Korea's energy infrastructure is obsolete and power shortages are frequent. While South Korea is easily accessible, much of what happens in the north remains in the dark. And the strictly guarded border dividing both nations, the DMZ, is clearly traceable. This image may be the most impressive illustration of how big the impact of more than 70 years of division are. But the map also teaches us the long-lasting impact such separations can have, even those that have already been over. So I was going to question this. Imagine how Germany or West Germany and East Germany would have looked 40 years ago from this satellite view. I assume it would have been a lot different, but... Even now, I mean, I guess you can just see a lot less major cities in East Germany, but at the same time, it is a much smaller region. For come. At the time of the Cold War, Germany was separated into East and West, and the city of Berlin was divided as well. And as a result of that, its city lights still appear in two different colors. The western part of the city was cut off from the rest of West Germany and relied on gas lamps because it wanted to be independent from a possibly failing power supply. Although Germany has been reunited since 1990 and this separation has been overcome for more than a quarter of a century, it can still be seen from space. This image points to the global challenges posed by the steadily increasing world population. And while man-made borders cannot be seen during the day, the lines of political origin become apparent at night, but appear all the more absurd and artificial. When viewed during daylight, the human influence on our planet is less obvious. But this single image highlights the social divides and political strife from both past and the present. Oh, is it over? That was a short video. That was a re I mean, I knew it was short, but that went by very quick. Indian parents would freak out if they got to know that so many people in India have kept the lights on. For anyone, on for anyone wondering why is West the western part of India is not lit up, like the rest it's because there's a giant desert located in that area there's, an, there's a desert in india i didn't even know that here in australia we don't have lights just fires i wish schools taught geography like this seeing the light just fade away from syria is hot yeah that is sad man it is sad what's happened like you look at like what again what some of these cities in like the middle east or just cities that are going through war how they I, i'm gonna say the middle east i mean a lot of them they look like a lot of them look beautiful like in syria in Lebanon, I mean, a lot of the cities, like, I think in Lebanon, a lot of the cities are still, like, they're not as, like, nowhere near as damaged as, like, the ones in Syria. But you just see how they've been destroyed over the last 10, 20 years or whatever, maybe longer, maybe a bit less. And it's just horrible to see because they are beautiful historical er like areas. But what happens, happens, you know, sadly. But, um, yeah, this is a little look into that. Hopefully you found this interesting. Let me know your thoughts. And until next time, like, subscribe, and peace.